Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Conference is good to be back. Yay. Meeting old friends and coming together as a conservative family to reinforce our common values. These have been tough times for our country. But despite the unprecedented challenges we have faced, this government has remained grounded and guided by our conservative values and the good sense of the British people. It has brought the very best of us out as a nation, from the carers to the volunteers, the scientists to the doctors and nurses, and to the brave men and women of our police and our fire services who have risen to the challenges presented to us by COVID with great professionalism and commitment. But our thanks to them go out from this hall today. <laughs> Two years ago here in Manchester, I said that the British people would always be my compass and that I would deliver on their priorities. And I make that commitment to you today again. The British people want a government on their side, keeping them safe. All our thoughts remain with Sarah Everard's family and friends. Her murderer, whose name I will not repeat, was a monster. His explicit intention was to instill fear and terror into women and girls. I say this as Home Secretary, but also as a woman, that such unconscionable crimes and acts of violence against women and girls have no place in our society. And that is why I have redoubled my efforts to ensure that women and girls feel safe. Since I became Home Secretary, cross-government funding to tackle these abhorrent crimes has trebled in relation to any other two-year period. The Police, Crime, Sentencing and Courts Bill extends whole life orders to child murderers and ends automatic halfway release for serious sexual and violent offenders. And nearly a year ago, I launched the first ever survey of women and girls on tackling the crimes that disproportionately affect them. In the wake of Sarah's tragic murder, I reopened that survey. 180,000 women and girls were brave enough to share some of their stories with me, some for the first time. Their experiences informed my tackling violence against women and girls strategy, which I launched earlier this year. And I have wasted no time in putting that plan into action. I want to thank my colleagues. I want to thank my colleagues and thank Nimco Ali, who is here with us today, for her pioneering work on tackling these abhorrent crimes. And this month, our country's first ever dedicated national police officer for reducing and preventing crimes against women and girls will get to work, providing national direction to the police. Deputy Chief Constable Maggie Blythe, accountable to you through me. This government will always back the brave men and women of our police. And it is because of the strong relationship with the police that I can ask those difficult questions and also support them to do better. Recent tragic events have exposed unimaginable failures in policing. It is abhorrent that a serving police officer was able to abuse his position of power, authority and trust to commit such a horrific crime. The public have a right to know what systematic failures enabled his continued employment as a police officer. We need answers as to why this was allowed to happen. I can confirm today that there will be an inquiry to give the independent oversight needed to ensure that something like this can never happen again. <clears throat> 
Later this year, I will launch the first ever standalone domestic abuse strategy. I'm undertaking a review of the police management of registered sex offenders to stop paedophiles and rapists, including members of grooming gangs, from returning to the very communities that they tore apart. I'm outlawing the sickening practice of virginity testing, a barbaric, medieval and evasive practice exclusively performed on women, often to control them and often without their consent. Well, not under this Home Secretary. <laughs> Women and girls have said enough is enough. And the Conservative Party agrees. The safety and security of our citizens is paramount. Without safety and security, there can be no freedom. And our approach to crime will always be based on seeking justice for victims and survivors, ensuring that perpetrators feel the full force of the law. We have delivered more powers to the police so that they can do exactly that, including stop and search. We are toughening sentences for the worst and most serious offenders, including terrorists, rapists and child murderers. We are nearly halfway through to recruiting 20,000 additional police officers. And this summer, we launched our new beating crime plan to cut murder, serious violence, neighborhood crime, including antisocial behavior. Under my watch, we have seen some of the biggest law enforcement raids in our country's history. With our crackdown on county lines drug gangs resulting in over 1,000 county lines shut down millions of pounds of cash seized and over 6,000 criminals arrested. We are cutting the head off the snake and taking down those kingpins behind these deadly supply lines. And that's thanks to my brilliant ministerial team. We are delivering for the British people. Drug abuse and addiction ruins communities. It devastates lives and tears families apart. Drugs are also responsible for the crimes that I am committed to cutting. Today, I am announcing the expansion of drug testing on arrest across all 43 police forces in England and Wales. Those who test positive as confirmed drug users will be supported to tackle their drug abuse and regain their independence. But for those unwilling to address their drug misuse, there will be the harshest possible legal sanctions and consequences. So while Sir Keir Starmer backs calls to decriminalise drugs, we will take the tough action needed to build back safer and continue to put the interests of our country first. Our values embody service before self. And this can be neatly defined by the Hindu word, seva, which can mean service, commitment, and dedication to others. Ensuring the best interests of our country come first is what drives me each and every day. That is my responsibility, and that is my service, and that is our party. And it is because of our commitment to put in the needs of the hard-working, often silent majority first, that I will not tolerate the so-called eco-warriors trampling over our way of life and draining police resources. <laughs> their, actions, their actions over recent weeks have amounted to some of the most self-defeating environmental protests that this country has ever seen. The freedom to protest is a fundamental right our party will forever fight to uphold, but it must be within the law. Measures already going through Parliament will ensure that these criminals can be brought to justice for the disruption that they are causing but we are going to go further to close down the legal loopholes exploited by these offenders. So today I can announce that we will also increase the maximum penalties for disrupting a motorway, criminalize interference with key infrastructure such as roads, railways, and our free press, 
and give the police and the courts new powers to deliver so that they can deal with the small minority of offenders intent on travelling around the country, causing disruption and misery to our communities. This Conservative government is taking the tough decisions needed to cut crime and make our streets safe. And that's not all. We have finally ended free movement. <laughs> Delivered on our new points-based immigration system, welcoming people to our country based on the skills they have to offer and not on the colour of their passports. Our new routes are attracting the best and the brightest talent from around the world, welcoming brilliant scientists, the finest academics, and leading people in their fields all helping to drive our economy forwards as we build back better from the pandemic. And at long last, the British immigration system is under the control of the British government. But despite what we have already delivered, we must be honest with ourselves about the long-standing problems that we still face. We owe it to our country to continue confronting the difficult issues, no matter how controversial or complex they may be. Taking action on difficult decisions that have stumped politicians for too long. All states have a responsibility to control their borders. For where there is a door, there must be a doorkeeper. What is happening in the channel with small boats is unsafe, unfair and unacceptable. From the vast camps outside Calais, mainly of male economic migrants, to the shocking images of people crammed into flimsy boats crossing the channel, exploited by people smugglers, vile criminals characterised by ruthlessness and greed who even threaten to drown small children just to line their pockets. This cannot continue, which is why we are going after the criminals behind these, this perilous trade in people smuggling. And then, of course, there is the legal process. If an asylum claim is rejected, there is nearly always an automatic right to appeal. And no surprise that everybody appeals. Even if the decision is to refuse asylum is upheld, there can be yet another appeal, right up until the possibility of further appeals at the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal. And if that fails, the claimant and their lawyers can start a fresh claim. And then even when seated on a plane, their lawyers can still block their removal. Now, Britain's asylum system might have worked 20 years ago, but not now. The system is collapsing under the pressures created by these parallel illegal routes of to asylum facilitated by smuggling gangs. Labour would have you believe that the capacity of our asylum system is completely unlimited, but the very presence of economic migrants through these illegal routes is undermining our ability to support those in genuine need of protection. To that, I say no. Our system must uphold our reputation as a country where criminality is not rewarded, but where playing by the rules is. My new plan for immigration is already making its way through Parliament. And at the heart of this plan is a simple principle, control. That is not unreasonable. Through our new plan for immigration, Britain will be fair, but firm. And we will continue to be outward facing and provide sanctuary to those in need through safe and legal resettlement routes. From Uganda to Syria, Hong Kong to Afghanistan, under conservative leadership, the United Kingdom will always hold out the hand of friendship to those most in need which is why I established a new resettlement route for Afghans fleeing persecution 
prioritising women and girls. And we will always support the brave men and women of our armed forces who served in Afghanistan and continue to keep us safe around the world. We are smashing the economic model of the people smugglers so that they can no longer profit from human misery. The current maximum penalty for entering the country legally is six months. We're increasing that to four years. Under current maximum sentence for people smugglers right now is 14 years. We are changing that to life. In standing by the world's most vulnerable, we will prioritise those who play by our rules over those who seek to take our country for a ride. For the first time, how somebody arrives in the United Kingdom will impact upon how their asylum claim is processed. Our new one-stop shop will tackle the multiple claims and appeals which frequently frustrate removals. And our new laws will speed up the removal of those with no legal right to be in our country. Now, I know from the briefings that I receive from our intelligence and security agencies that there are people who attempt to come into our country to do us harm, plotting to strike at our very way of life. And I shall continue to fight with every ounce of my breath and my being to uphold the safety and the security of our nation. And with all of this, we will continue to pursue joint solutions to joint problems. France is a safe country, not one riven by war or conflict. There is no reason why any asylum seeker should come to the United Kingdom directly from France. And I make no apology for securing our borders and exploring all possible options to save lives by ending these horrific journeys. Which is why, right from the start, Boris and I have worked intensively with every institution with the responsibility to protect our borders. Border Force, the police, the National Crime Agency, maritime experts, and yes, the military, to deliver operational solutions, including new sea tactics, which we are working to implement to turn back the boats. Whilst this represents progress, this single measure alone cannot solve this problem. We must stay the course and see this whole new plan for immigration through. It will take time, but I can tell you now, I will continue to take the difficult action needed to address this long-standing issue. So what do our opponents say about our plans? Well, of course, they attack them because they want open borders. They don't care about the intolerable pressures on public services or local authorities. They do not care about the damage to our labour market and driving down the wages of the hard-working majority. They do not care about the British people who will have to foot this bill. And what's worse is that they do not care about ensuring that the victims of crimes committed by foreign national offenders can rebuild their lives safe in the knowledge that their attackers are no longer here. Labour MPs, some of whom even sit with the leader of the opposition at his shadow cabinet table, shamefully campaign to halt the removal of murderers, rapists and child abusers. Criminals who have caused untold harm and devastation on our soil, including to women and girls. While they busy themselves writing letters defending these convicts, this Home Secretary will always put the rights of victims first. And with that, we have removed nearly eight and a half thousand foreign national offenders from our country.
Conference. I will never flinch from taking the difficult decisions needed to keep our country safe and secure. And where criminals attempt to incite fear, harm and terror in our communities, I will always act. Where the lights are being switched off on other people's liberties, I will act. And where our borders and our laws need strengthening, I will act. Our party owes it to our country to continue to confront these difficult decisions and issues, no matter how controversial or complex. And there will, of course, be new challenges and new tests, and we will meet them, strengthened by our belief in our country. That is my promise to you, and that is my service to the people of Britain. Thank you.